Okay, in this video, we're going to look at how to earn money as an electronic hobbyist. Now, if you're an electronic hobbyist, you're probably familiar with these two boards. This is Arduino Nano. This is Arduino Uno. They're very popular. Maybe you've played around with Texas Instruments Launchpad, MSP430, or maybe the Raspberry Pi. Now, you're probably familiar with uploading sketches into these two Arduino boards, and you know how to drive the GPIO lines. You're familiar with the SPI, I2C bus. Maybe you've driven an LCD display. Or maybe you've interfaced a Nano to a Bluetooth module, like this one here, HC06. Or maybe you've inter interfaced the Nano to an accelerometer, like this one here. Now, there's two basically main fields of electronics out there. There's the consumer electronics and there's the industrial electronics. Now, the consumer electronics consists of stereos, TVs, DVD players, appliances. And we're not going to go there. We're going to go into the industrial electronic field. There's more opportunities there. So we could go into forestry, mining, uh, railway, transportation, the food industry. Now, that's very big because everybody's got to eat. Uh, there's welding, the welding equipment, signs and displays. There's the film industry, the automotive industry. So in this video, we're going to focus on repair of control boards in the industrial electronic field. Okay, here's an example of an electronic control board. Now this is a flashing light out of a railway crossing. You can see all the LEDs. Now you have three options when you're, re when you're repairing a control board. The first option is to find the bad component on the board and, and repair it, replace it, and get the board up and running. That's your best option. And if you have a schematic, you could power up the board and do some circuit tracing to find the problem area and then replace the component. You can see here, there's your power input on this board. And you can see there's a solder in fuse on the board. It could be simple as that. And over here, you can see four diodes. That's your bridge rectifier and your voltage regulator. So your best, your best ideal scenario would, would be to actually repair the board. The sec second option is if you find the, the area that's bad and the part is obsolete, then you could build your own little circuit on a piggyback board and mount it to the main board and get the board up and running. And a third option is actually to build your own board to simulate the control board. So there's the three options, and we'll get into them more detail in this video. Okay, if you're trying to repair a control board, and you don't have a schematic, then I use one of these. This is my component tester. Now you could build these, they're easy to build. So on the input of this box, I have two, two uh, banana plugs for my, for my test leads. There's my test leads here. I got sharp tips, so I could dig into the pads on the PC board. And on the other side are two BNC connectors. And that connects up to a scope, so you can just get an old 20 megahertz uh, analog scope, and you plug in your BNC connectors, and you plug that into channel 1 and channel 2 of the scope. Then you go into the XY mode on the scope. So what the scope will display, it will display the voltage across the component, will be your, say, your X, and the current through the component would be your Y. So you'll get, an, you'll get a voltage versus current graph on your scope, and you'll be able to trace uh, transistors, diodes, uh, shorts, and opens. So this is a very handy uh, box to have. And I was going to make a video how to build one of these, but there's a couple of videos on, on, online that are very good. So I'll link that down in the description box. And you can build your own component tester to troubleshoot your control board. Okay, I put some components on my breadboard, which I'll test with my component tester. So you see i got an LED capacitor, i got a transistor, I got a light dependent resistor, uh, a switching diode, a relay, a little buzzer, and a pot potentiometer. So when we test LEDs, it's quite nice because it actually lights them up, so you can tell right away if it's working or not. It light up an LED. And for the capacitor, I could go across the capacitor. I could test the emitter base, base collector, emitter collector junction. I could test uh, the resistance of the LDR. Also the diode, I could check the diode. And on a relay, if I go across the coil, I could actually energize, you can hear it buzz. So I know the relay is, uh, the coil is actually intact. Also on a little buzzer, I don't know if you can hear that, it makes a little noise there. And a pot. So next I'll actually, uh, we'll actually look at the, the signatures that each of these components will give on the component tester. Okay, I'm gonna test each component on my breadboard with my component tester and we'll see what kind of signatures we get from each component. So right now this is our open circuit signature and if I short the elites together 
That's my short circuit signature. So if we go across the LED, we can see it breaking down there. There's their LED signature. And we go across the capacitor, we get a nice circle and it's not broken anywhere, so we know the capacitor is good. Now if we go to the transistor, we go to the emitter base junction, we can see it's breaking down. That's a good way to tell the emitter base junction on, on, a, on a transistor is that uh, it will break down before the, the base collector. If we go to the base collector, there's a signature there. And if we go to the emitter collector, there's a signature there. Now we'll go across the light dependent resistor. Now if I put my finger over the, over the top, you can see it changing resistance. So we can check out a light dependent resistor. And we'll go across the switching diode at 1N914. So there's your diode signature. And we go across a pot. And if I use a screwdriver and I can adjust the pot, you can see it's varying resistance. So with these signatures, we could test each component on a control board. Okay, if you have two identical control boards and you don't have the schematic and you know one board is known to be good, you could compare the signatures from the good board to the bad board. So if you go into the area on the board where you think the problem is and you can compare signatures and when you come across the same point having two different signatures, you know you're zeroing in on the problem right down to the component and then you can replace that component and fix that board. Okay, I have two identical control boards. Now one of them is bad, another one is known to be good. So I'm going to compare the two boards. I don't have a schematic. So this way I could just I could just probe around until I find signatures that are different on the same point on the board, and I know I'm zeroing in on the problem. So the, the component tester that I'm using has a circuitry that switches back and forth between the two leads. So I just have to place the two probes on each board and it will switch automatically. So we'll go to the same point on the board. And you can see the signature there is the same, so that's good. So we'll go to another point on the board. And that one matches. And we'll go to another point. And that one matches. We go to another point. And there we see a difference. So we, now we know that that there could be a problem area because on the same point on the, on the good board the bad board is showing a different signature so we could zero in on the problem using this technique. Okay you've built a lot of projects using the Arduino boards either the Nano or the Uno and you've downloaded a sketch to get your project going or you're using the Raspberry Pi and you download the correct library to get your project going but after a while you're going to plateau you're not going to grow because you're downloading sketches and you can become a copy and paste programmer so if you want to get serious, you should look into programming your own code. Uh, pick a, micro, a microcontroller that you like. Maybe even do a little assembler language and pick a language of, cho of your choice and, and, and practice writing your own code. Because that's the only way you're going to grow. If you're going to keep on loading sketches from somebody else, you're just going to plateau. So to get serious, I, I recommend doing that. Also, if you're a programmer and you want to learn about electronics, there's a few books that I can recommend for learning electronics. Okay, if you want to learn about electronics, this is the book that I recommend. It's called Practical Electronics for Inventors. It's very well written, and this is the third edition, and I think the fourth edition is out. So this book is good for beginners or advanced. It starts off simple. It starts off with passive devices, inductors, capacitors, resistors, and then it gets into active devices, transistors, uh, SCRs, operational amplifiers, gets into logic devices, microcontrollers, analog to digital controllers, AC and DC theory. Everything is in this book. It's, it's very well written and there's a lot, a lot of data in there. Somebody went through a lot of trouble uh, to, to write this book. So I, I really recommend this book. And this book is basically all you need. Now, if, as an option, if you want to learn about uh, radios, because we're in a wireless world with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, you can look at the AAR handbook. Now they come out every year. This is this is actually an old one. It's 1992, so you could get the 2017 uh, edition. Uh, and so if you want to learn about radios, and this starts off simple too. It starts off with with uh, passive devices, active devices, gets into components, but then it gets seriously into uh, radio theory and antenna theory. So between these two books, that's basically all you need for electronics. 
and then getting into a radio theory. Okay, in our second option to repair a control board, we can design and build a little piggyback board like the ones we see here. Sometimes we'll run across a control board where the part that's failed is obsolete. And if you go to the manufacturer for a replacement board, of course they don't have any because the part's, op part's obsolete so they can't build them. And they won't spend the money for the R&D to build a new board for a machine that's say 10 years old. So the owner is stuck. The owner of the machine is stuck. He's been looking on eBay and he can't find a board. So something like this could get him up and running. A little circuit board like this to simulate the, the part that's obsolete. And I built these on, uh, on Vero board. It's pretty simple. And on the wires I got some terminals and I could hook them up to a, like a terminal strip and then run the other end in, into the board itself. So something something like this, even a board like this could replace a whole control board. So something, sometimes something very simple could get the machine up and running and it will save the owner uh, a lot of money. Okay, in our third scenario to repair a control board, we're going to look into actually building the whole control board ourselves. So this is a general purpose box that I use to build a control board. Now I only do this when it's worth my while. If a machine is worth a lot of money and there's no other way to go that we have to build our own control board. So you can see here I have an Arduino Nano. That's my smarts. And then I have some drivers and I actually have a Bluetooth module in there so I could actually get into this box through uh, my smartphone. So we'll, we'll look at how we do this in, our, in part two. I'm going to make a part two video and we'll actually go through a real scenario on a control board in a machine that's worth twenty thousand dollars and how we could actually uh, come up with our own control board so stay tuned for uh, part two video